again. Hope you're doing well. I'm Hardleg Joe, if in you didn't know, and today I'd like to talk to you about art. Both what it is and what it isn't. What it's capable of and what purpose it serves in society. As well as how that purpose is often lost on modern audiences. As you might imagine, this topic was inspired by all the talk of AI art that's been going on lately. And while I am interested in discussing that in a future video, I won't be touching on it here. This is more about laying the groundwork for that. Because hearing all these takes about art has made me realize how much ambiguity there is on the subject. Even among artists and academics, there's very little agreement about what art actually is. Like sure, everyone has a vague concept of it, but if you ask them to define art in exact terms, or if you ask them what purpose art serves, you'll get dozens of different answers, and most of them won't be very useful. Many of the definitions I've heard are so vague that just about everything can be considered art. And don't get me wrong, that is a valid definition, but it's only really useful if you want to talk about art in a philosophical way. If you want to discuss how it relates to practical systems like the law or the economy, then you're going to need a more practical definition. Now one attempt I've seen at that is the emotional definition, which says art is all about invoking an emotional response from its audience. Under this rationale, any human creation that makes you feel things is art. Now this definition is also impractical, because emotions aren't very reliable. People will get emotional about literally anything, seemingly at random sometimes. So if we try to use emotions as a measuring stick, we'll essentially end up back at everything being art again. Now that being said, you can at least have technical discussions using this definition. Like you can explain what a piece of art makes you feel and why it does that, which can be very useful if you're reviewing art or discussing how to create it. Of course, since those statements are based on your personal emotions, they often say more about you and your opinions of art than the work itself. The same is true if you want to say art is about creativity or originality or beauty. These are all subjective ideas that, again, can be attributed to almost anything that people make. If we're going to discuss art as it applies to everyone, if we're going to talk about art's role in society at large, then we're going to need something less personal, something more objective. Which is unfortunate, because the two definitions I've already gone over are probably the most objective ones I've heard. A surprising amount of people talk about art in an almost spiritual way. As if creativity were some magical force infused with the unknowable power of the human soul. Which it's not. It's, we could describe art and how it's made in very simple and understandable terms. In fact, that's how I prefer to view it. It may lack a certain sense of romanticism, but I think we need a basic, logical, and frankly boring view of art if we want to have serious and meaningful discussions about it. Well, plus, from a political standpoint, I think that getting rid of all the supernatural undertones around art can be helpful for navigating life in general. In my experience, modern society, and America in particular, seems to have a pretty severe problem with media literacy. There's a sizable chunk of the population that doesn't seem to understand the fundamental principles at work when they watch a TV show or listen to a song. And that's a serious problem, because art is very important. People need to understand and appreciate art in order for society to function properly. That's why I think it's critical to cut through all the metaphor and mysticism around art and just explain it in simple, practical terms that everyone can understand. 
make it clear exactly what art is and what purpose it serves so we can all get on the same page when it comes to discussing things like media literacy and the impact of AI. So that's my goal here. Lay out a definition for art that is useful. This isn't the only way to define art. I hope I've made that clear by showing you several alternatives. But I do think it's the most practical way to view art. And it's also how I personally approach the subject. So even if you don't necessarily agree with me, this should at least give you some insight to understand my perspective and any future videos that I make on the subject. So now that we have that long disclaimer out of the way, let's get to our practical definition. Art is an unintuitive form of communication. That's it. It's a more complex alternative to speaking and gesturing. If you try to deliver a message by making something or doing something which doesn't come naturally, then it's art. That's the simple definition. Unintuitive communication. Now just to make sure there's zero confusion here, let's go over those two elements real quick, starting with what communication is. Because that's one of those words like art itself that most people understand, but only in a vague, hard to define way. If we really want to understand communication, we need to take a moment to consider the step-by-step -step process. Think about what really happens when I speak, for instance. I have an idea in my head. I come up with the words to describe that idea. I say the words out loud. And assuming I chose those words well and you understand what they mean, your brain can convert those words back into the idea that I was thinking of. That's the essence of communication. It's a brain-to-brain -brain transmission, sending information from one person to another using some medium as an in-between. Now, mediums are where things can get a little confusing because a medium can be almost anything. Like, movies are a medium. Music is a medium. Stories and poems are mediums. Dancing is a medium. If art is a method of communicating, then a medium is a method of doing art. And there are a lot of ways to do art, which is why some people come to the conclusion that everything is art. Which again is a valid idea, but if you want to have practical discussions about this, I think it's very important not to confuse mediums with art. Because dancing can be used as an artistic medium, but sometimes people just dance because it's fun. They're not trying to communicate anything. Drawing is usually seen as an artistic medium, but sometimes people draw because they're bored. They're just doodling at random. Using a medium does not automatically make something art. What defines art is that it intentionally communicates. Like, painting is absolutely a medium for art, but we wouldn't consider it artistic to paint the walls of your living room a pleasant shade of beige, because you're not trying to communicate anything by doing it. Now, some might argue that your actions communicate whether you intend to do it or not, but I think intent is critically important. Communication is a brain-to-brain -brain transmission. And that isn't possible if one brain didn't intend to say anything. Now, of course, you can extrapolate information about someone based on their choices, but I'd argue that that isn't communication, it's deductive reasoning. But I digress. Point is, painting, not always art. On the flip side, the mere act of simply taking a toilet and putting it on display in a museum, well, that is art because doing that is a deliberate action meant to send a message. It's artistic, even though the medium is not what you'd expect. I'm not even sure what you'd call this medium. Moving objects around? Labeling? I think I've heard the term ready-made sculpture. It's like I said, a medium can be just about anything. In the case of speaking, the medium is language, which is 
probably the easiest and most direct way to communicate since, you know, most of us use language without even consciously thinking about it. And that's where the other element of art comes in, what separates it from other forms of communication. Generally, we don't consider a work artistic if it's intuitive, if it's easy. The lines we paint on the street to direct traffic aren't works of art. Neither is speaking casually to your friend, pointing a gun at someone you hate, or shaking that booty towards someone you like. These are all actions that communicate something, sure, but they do so in a way that comes naturally, in a way that takes very little effort. In order for something to qualify as artistic, it has to take some planning, some creative thinking. It has to be different from how we intuitively communicate. Alright, so now that we know what art is, let's talk about why we make it in the first place. Like, if language is the simplest and easiest form of communication, then why complicate things by using a medium that's more difficult to understand? Well, language has its limitations. Many of them, actually. There are a lot of ideas that can be transmitted more effectively through art than through words alone. For example, one flaw of language is that the speaker and the listener have to know what all the words mean. Like, obviously, if we speak different languages, then talking at all is going to be very difficult. But even if we both speak English, we might not have the same vocabulary. If I use words that you don't know, then whatever message I'm trying to transmit can get lost. For instance, Let's say I'm trying to tell you about a thing that I saw in my dream last night. I might say, oh, you know, it looked kind of like a chartreuse DeLorean. Now, if you know what a DeLorean is, and you know what chartreuse looks like, you might get the exact image in your head that I'm thinking of. But if you don't know those words, then the attempted communication just fails. And while I could elaborate further, it would take a lot of words and a lot of time to accurately describe a chartreuse DeLorean to someone who's completely unfamiliar with those concepts. It would be much quicker and easier to just show you this image I made in Photoshop. This is art. It's something I took time and effort to create which communicates an idea to you. It's not complex art, I wouldn't say this is very artistic, because the message in this case is literally just check out this weird car. But still, it's art nonetheless, because it accomplishes that same brain-to-brain -brain transmission that speech does. Just think of the steps from before. I had an idea, I came up with a way to express that idea visually, I created the artwork, and assuming I did it skillfully enough and you're media literate, then your brain should be able to convert that artwork back into the idea I was thinking of. It's the same concept as before, just using a different medium. In this case, image manipulation or photoshopping, whatever you want to call this mess. Now obviously this medium comes with some pretty clear advantages over language. Namely, it's much faster. Like you could see this image and understand at a glance that a DeLorean is a kind of blocky steel car, and that chartreuse is a kind of pale, sickly shade of green. You learned all that information and more in a fraction of the time it took me to say it out loud. And that's the benefit of any visual medium. Physical appearances are understood almost instantly. So if you're trying to communicate how something looks, then pictures and drawings are more effective than speaking. If you want to communicate how something moves, well then it helps to have a moving medium like film or video games. Music is good at depicting tones and nuanced emotions, things that are kind of hard to describe in words. And any kind of story is capable of condensing huge swaths of information into a relatively short and often entertaining experience that can be far more memorable than any speech could alone. Every medium has its own advantages, 
And when you combine those mediums together, those advantages only multiply. To the point that language just by itself seems almost quaint and limited by comparison. Despite its complexity, or perhaps because of it, art is often the optimal way to communicate. At least, it would be, if not for a few key flaws shared by all forms of art. One of those is media literacy. Now this isn't really an issue with my chartreuse DeLorean example, because the idea I expressed here is extremely simple. Like, it's just a single object. There's nothing else to learn about it other than what it looks like. But the visual arts do have their own vocabulary of sorts, just like language does. An image can communicate a lot more by using specific artistic techniques, things like framing and color. Even with just this simple picture here, I can alter it to make the car seem happier or sadder. I could do this and make it seem old and outdated. But if the audience doesn't understand what those techniques are meant to communicate, then the message can be lost. The changes can seem arbitrary. Just as you need to be literate to understand what words mean, you need to have media literacy to understand what different artistic choices mean. This applies not only to the audiences watching the art, but the people creating it as well. Because the other major challenge associated with art is skill. Like, I'll let you know right now, this picture? Not a perfect representation of what I imagined in my mind. The car from my dreams was like a DeLorean, but there were a few fundamental differences that I didn't depict here. And that's because I'm just not skilled enough at image editing to recreate those details with any amount of accuracy. That's the trade-off with art. A picture may be worth a thousand words, but pictures are much more difficult to make than words. All art is. Which means, unless the person making that art is skilled enough, then the communication can fail pretty badly. That's where artists come in. An artist is someone who has dedicated time to honing those artistic skills. And an artist is considered good when they can use their chosen medium to communicate effectively. A good painter, for example, can accurately translate an idea in their head to the canvas. A good musician can express a complex emotion via song. A good author can condense a lifetime of experience into a single story. The question is, why do they do that? Why do we have artists? What role do they play in society? To understand that, we need to talk about... So now that we know what art can do, it's time to talk about why we need it. What is the purpose of art in our society? Oftentimes when people try to do what I'm doing here, you know, break down art logically, they come away with this idea that artists are useless or a luxury. That art is something we do for fun, which has no practical applications. And nothing could be further from the truth. We are a social species. Everything significant we have ever accomplished has been made possible through cooperation and teamwork. And proper communication is absolutely essential for that. It doesn't matter what philosophy you follow or what values you have. If you want to accomplish anything significant, you're going to need the help of other people. You're going to need a whole society of people working together. And while you can talk to some members of society on an individual basis, art is one of the few avenues for mass communication, a way to deliver messages to large swaths of society all at once. You don't have to look too deep into history to find many instances of books or plays that spurred a nation towards action. And while I could list a bunch of famous historical examples, I think we can understand this idea just by looking at the modern day. Our current society is fractured in a lot of ways. 
But some of the few shared values that we still have are preserved through the art we make. They may be cliche, but I sincerely believe that the abundance of superhero stories that we've seen over the last three decades have helped reinforce the importance of ideals like selflessness, truth, justice, and cooperation. The overabundance of love songs that have been on the radio for the last 80 years or so, those communicate a shared desire to find love, to make meaningful connections with other people in the face of hopelessness and alienation. These are extremely simple ideas, but they aren't universal. Previous generations had very different ideas about what love and justice were. And it's only our modern popular art that has kept these specific interpretations of those ideas cemented in our minds for the better part of a century. And that's a good thing. We need some shared ideas, some sense of culture, if we're going to work together for the common good. The fact is, if we want civilization to function, then it is critically important that we have books and movies and songs and games, because these allow us to share important information with each other. Not just across great distances, but through time as well. Art is largely how past generations communicate with us. Books in particular have a legacy going back thousands of years, passing down ideas from ancient times to today. And the art we make and preserve now will carry our own messages to future generations. My point is, art and artists are extremely important. Because art is communication, and communicating is necessary for civilization. The only problem is, as I said earlier, many people today aren't media literate. Oftentimes, they don't even know that art is supposed to communicate at all, which has left us in a very strange situation. Not only do we have a populace who is sometimes ignorant to the messages being delivered to them, but the problem has been going on for so long now that a lot of the artists today don't even understand what their job is. Allow me, if you will, to take a little artistic tangent of my own, to illustrate a point with a short story. Imagine a post-apocalyptic wasteland several hundred years after some catastrophic event has turned our civilization to rubble. Humans are still around, but they've reverted to a much more primitive lifestyle, living off the land in small nomadic tribes that have long since forgotten the old world and its technology, to the point that even paper is a lost relic. None of these future humans know how to read, in fact, the skill has been so thoroughly forgotten that they don't even have a concept of written language. They can speak to each other, but the idea that those words could be written down physically doesn't even cross their mind. So when they stumble upon a row of old billboards that miraculously survived the cataclysm, and they see the words written on them, it doesn't even occur to them that those words and letters might mean something. To them, letters are just little geometric designs meant to enhance the pictures, as mysterious and cryptic as the strange images themselves of a world long since forgotten. Now imagine that these future humans, either out of boredom or admiration for what they've found, decide to replicate this ancient artifact. Using scrap wood and whatever else they can find, they make a crude billboard of their own to add to the collection. Most billboards have words on them, so they decide to write some words too. But because they don't know how to read, they just copy the letters that look cool, arrange them in a way that seems pleasant. They end up making something that looks like a billboard with language on it, but it doesn't have a coherent message. 
The words and letters are mostly gibberish because they don't understand the language. They just recognize patterns and they know how to copy them. That is what I feel like a lot of today's art is. Like not all of it, of course, or even the majority of it, to be honest. Like we haven't lost all concept of communicating through art, but a lot of the biggest and most popular pieces of media that get released today aren't trying to communicate anything. Not on purpose, anyway. I talked earlier about superhero movies and how they deliver a message of justice. But so many of those movies fail to deliver that message in a clear or effective way. And oftentimes these movies have contradicting messages or they go out of their way to not have a message. And that's because they aren't being made by people who want to communicate. They're being made by people whose job is to create profitable movies. Now, these people have the artistic skills to work a medium. They know the techniques to accurately translate ideas to film. But more often than not, they don't have anything of substance to say. Because their goal isn't to say anything. It's to make money. And the safest way to do that in the entertainment industry is to copy something that was successful and popular in the past. To recreate something that people already like. So that's what they do. They take ideas from old comic books or other superhero movies and they reuse them. Often without really understanding why the original art was made in the first place. They copy the aesthetic elements, the look of the characters, the beats of the plot, but because they don't care about communicating, they don't communicate. The biggest blockbuster movies and TV shows, the media with the highest budgets that reach the largest audiences, often aren't trying to say anything. They do still communicate, but it's almost accidental. Their movies only have messages because the source material they were copying did, and some of that just bled over into this new work. And this oversaturation of derivative media has a trickle-down effect all through society. It conditions audiences to expect art that makes no attempt at a message, to the point that many people today think art shouldn't have a message that even trying to communicate is somehow a bad thing. And of course, a sizable portion of those people will become artists themselves. They will take inspiration from that popular media and just copy it exactly, flooding the world with derivative works that are more concerned with copying the techniques and aesthetics of older art without trying to say anything. There's a reason that so many people today think that art is all about emotions. Because with a lot of modern media, that's all you can really get out of it. Like those post-apocalyptic wanderers, they don't know what the letters mean. They just know that certain arrangements make them feel things. So that's how they analyze art, on whatever emotions it can stir in them. Of course, unlike the future humans from my little story, the vocabulary of art has not been completely lost. There's still tons of great artists out there who are using art in a neat and practical way. And a rather large slice of the population still understands what art is doing. They know they're being communicated to, and they know how to read that communication. Media illiteracy is not universal. It's just widespread enough that it's starting to become a serious problem for our country. Especially with modern technology making it easier than ever for everyone to create art on a whim. But that is a topic for a future video. As much as I'd like to continue on this topic, uh, I think I've been here long enough. <laughs> I came into this just wanting to explain what art is and what purpose it serves, and I think I've accomplished that, even if it took me far longer than I was expecting. 
So for now, I'm going to end it here. Hopefully you enjoyed this little deviation from my usual videos. If you did, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to make a sequel to this, talking about art versus entertainment, or looking at how the commodification of art has gotten us in the situation we are today. But I want to make sure there's interest there first before I go on another big long rant. <laughs> so if you are interested, consider doing all the stuff to let me know. Uh, comment, drop a like on the video, share the video around so it gets more views, or consider subscribing to see the future videos I work on. I'll make my decision based on whatever all the analytics end up saying. Regardless of what you do, thank you again for listening. I hope you enjoyed. And until next time, stay safe out there.